Um, so the first one is uh, the, the tumblers or wobbles, wobblers. Um, and uh, these are like those toys that uh, have a very low center of mass. And in this particular case, so if I hide the, the pivots, um, you won't see why these behave like this. But if I show them, it's because you have this large dynamic rigid body with mass one, uh, one kilo. Um, and right here, let me stop the simulation. Right here, there's this very small um, rigid body with mass uh, 10 kilos. And you can see it, for instance, if I go uh, with wireframe. And of course, there's also the small matter of connecting the two. And for this, I actually added a constraint. And this is a fixed constraint. So constraints are a bit more um, difficult objects to understand in terms of uh, how clavicula works. Uh, all the other, uh, other objects have like one single parent, right? You have a uh, hierarchy uh, with children attached to a parent. But uh, the difference with uh, the constraints is that each constraint is in fact made of uh, two objects and if you go over each of these um, you can see the rigid body that corresponds to that constraint that part of the constraint being highlighted uh, the pivot become the center becomes uh, larger and highlighted okay so the lateral one is for this one, the small one here, and this one is for the center. So let me show you um, how this goes. If So right now I'm not simulating, so I just pull this one out, right? And what the physics engine does behind the scenes, it will try to put this point and this point together in the world. So it will pull both rigid bodies together so that this one and this one coincide. Because in this case, it's a fixed constraint. So if I turn physics on, boom, it goes inside. If I select this one and I delete it, then the link between the two objects disappears, the constraint between them. If I revert it, it's back again, and the center of mass of the system is again very low. Yeah, so um, that's about it for this uh, demo, or perhaps let's just see how to uh, use one of these constraints. Um, let's go with a point-to-point -point constraint. And I'm going to use insert, which for this type of objects, it will, you can see what type of constraint you have here. Uh, I haven't yet made a display for them if, if they're not in the scene. So yeah, it's a bit tricky, but um, if you know what you selected or if you go here and you see what type of constraint you have, then you're fine. You know what you're gonna add in the scene. So I'm just gonna, so I clicked on this one. So I'm adding a constraint, a point-to-point -point constraint here, but it's gonna be 
one half of it will be parented to the world. So it's fixed in the world. What happens then is, of course, you can see this one is parented to this one. And this half of the constraint, you don't see to uh, anything being highlighted because, in fact, it's connected to the world. So if moving this part of the constraint will actually, the, the physics engine will try to pull the rigid body connected to this part of the constraint here. And yeah, that's how these things work. So the point-to-point -point constraint, it's a constraint that just fixes uh, the positions of these two half constraints, let's say, and uh, it leaves the rotation free, right? There's a bit of a delay, uh, I mean, not a delay, but it's an offset uh, till the solver gets to uh, uh, fix these points together. And that's because usually a physics engine, uh, especially the ones for games, will never completely solve the system. And in some cases, if the system is like over constraint, you can't properly solve it anyway. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so this is it for the, um, what was it called? Tumblers example. Let's go to the next one. Um, so this one is a, um, yeah, it's a simple <laughs> Pong game, but in fact, it's not really a game since you can't really uh, play it properly. Uh, you just can throw the uh, ball around and these uh, players, let's say, they just um, move in straight lines. So this is mostly to show um, the type of constraints that you can have. So again, I made these four static rigid bodies. And if I hit Q, uh, you can see the, the constraints. Let me reset the simulation. So this is actually connected to this. It's the same constraint with this. Uh, and it's a plane constraint. And if you see the Z axis is vertical and same for this one. So what this uh, constraint tries to do is uh, set the Z axis for both uh, to be uh, in the same direction. Um, so it will keep this object in the plane if you don't force it with the mouse or with other collisions. Uh, same for this one. So this one, this one is a slider and same for that, the other one. And a uh, slider, the same, will um, try to keep the two halves of the constraint um, on the same z-axis. And of course, the rigid body connected, the rigid body is connected to them, aligned along that axis. So this one is also connected to the world which means that um, the world cannot move because it's static and it means the rigid body will have this only option for movement along this uh, z-axis of the constraint. Same for this one. So yeah, this was more an more of an example to show the types of 
constraints. And you have the slider here and the plan, a plane constraint here. Uh, there's also the hinge constraint, which I think we're going to see in the next one. So it's a piston. So this one is a bit um, more complicated mechanism because you have uh, multiple uh, rigid bodies attached with some uh, constraints. So you have um, a cylinder, a box, and another cylinder. And yeah, what are the ingredients? So we have this hinge constraint. Let me activate Shift Q. Uh, so I'm activating the handles, or of course you can also see the Z axis on on the pivot. Um, so the hinge constraint keeps the objects aligned along the Z axis. Um, but unlike the slider, it doesn't let them slide along the, the that axis, but instead lets them turn around it. And this one is attached to the world. So again, it's like fixing this part and this part can turn around it. And with it, the object connected to it. Same here. So we have this hinge constraint, which one is connected, one half is connected to this one, one half to this one. So we have a hinge here. Same here, a hinge between this one and this one, a hinge between this one and this one, and a hinge between this one and the world. And the other thing that we need is a slider. So this one can only go in that direction. And for this, I added a slider constraint in this direction. And what happens in this case is that if you move one of the objects, uh, the physics engine will try to enforce those all the constraints that you've set up for those rigid bodies. And in this case, you have a, a piston. OK. The next one, um, it's the folding cubes that I have shown some time ago. Um, and this one is really just some hinges. Um, let me still show this. So you have two hinges here and here, and two hinges here and here. Between these two bodies, this one is between these two, this one between these two, this one lateral, and same here. And this is uh, the kind of system that you can make with uh, some wooden cubes and some uh, uh, adhesive tape, and it gives you this weird behavior, right? You can, and uh, usually these kind of cubes um, have some images here that are sliced along the edges of the cubes, so you can turn the cube around and have different images pop up. Uh, so, yeah, again, this is just showing off some uh, possibilities um, with these uh, constraints. Again, hinges all over. And this one, so this one is a, is a labyrinth, which is made just from static rigid bodies. All of these are static rigid bodies. 
uh, if I turn uh, the highlights on, you can see that everything becomes a bit more, well, violet blue, and this one becomes more green, which means that this one is a dynamic rigid bodies, rigid body, and all the rest are static. And what's more is that these lateral static rigid bodies are parented to this one. So they will move together. Um, let's turn the highlights off. And the idea is that um, gravity is down, right? And from the lateral, you can see that this one is a bit slanted. So if you turn this object, it will bring from the side, it will bring this part low. So the, the ball will fall. And same, you know, you can play a bit with it. Now again, for this one, I think there's restitution zero all over. But this is another effect of the physics engine at work. If you put a lot of impulse uh, in it, it will push. Uh, in fact, this object will most probably penetrate a bit the static rigid body, and it will the solver will push it out, and you will get some impulse. So it's not the restitution that does that, it's the actual uh, impulse from getting the rigid body out of one another, out of a collision. And yeah, there's still some small glitches uh, as to how the rigid bodies, like connected uh, static rigid bodies, move together. They still don't move uh, quite solidarily. They have some lag between them, still have to figure out why. And the last one is the... Okay. The Strand Beast, not sure how it's pronounced. So it's uh, one of those mechanisms that E.O. Jensen designed for his uh, creatures that walk on the beach. And yeah, it's just these boxes. that have these hinge constraints between them. And I'm gonna show you in a later video how you can easily create such a, um, such a, an articulated uh, and rather complex physics system. And if you spin on this one, as well as, so this one here, this hinge is connected to this static rigid body and um, these hinges here are connected to this one. So when you turn the static rigid body, or the kinematic, let's call it that, uh, all the other constraints have to be satisfied and they keep this uh, structures uh, and they move them in this particular way like it's walking right if you look at this point it will do something like this and lift the leg and go again okay so that's pretty much it for the physics update. Again, handled with care. There may be small issues about it. Uh, do let me know if you find any. 
and uh, yeah, in future versions uh, there should be some also some limits for the constraints. For instance, to be able to do uh, to create uh, some uh, rag dolls or human characters that have some limits in their constraints, uh, like at the knee or uh, wherever. Uh, the arms, the fingers, all that. Um, there will also be some uh, motorized constraints. So the idea is that uh, these will be able to move, to rotate automatically and drive this kind of creature with many legs across a plane, for instance, uh, another static rigid body. Uh, yeah, and maybe other things as well, but uh, they will be implemented slowly, one at a time, uh, in the future versions. Uh, that's it for the physics uh, update.